Hi, I'm Exo, and today's video is a deep dive into the IBM Feature Music Card. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I'm some expert on these things. If you want a complete rundown of any video card ever known to mankind, come over to our Discord forums, uh, tag a guy named Buyaka, and make any comment you want about sound cards. And then sit back, grab your popcorn, grab a drink, and watch him go. He will tell you more than you ever wanted to know, but it's because he loves this shit. I mean, this is what he lives for. <laughs> and uh, I always learn something new when he's talking about this stuff. So I am going to switch right over here to Wikipedia. 1987. The IBM Music Feature Card is not something that was supported in Vanilla DOS Box. And as far as I know, it's not supported in uh, ECE. I don't believe DOSBox X has it yet. Uh, there are a lot of uh, sound cards out there. This one is unique in that if you look down here, you know, it was $500 when it came out. Uh, about $1,280 in today's money. Uh, and it's a really early card coming out in 1987. It was primarily designed for composers. And Ken Williams over at Sierra saw that and said, cool, let's do it. And if you look at the list of games that's supported by it, which we'll do that over in Exodus, you will see that these are all Sierra games. And so we have 16 of them currently. Uh, all 16 are set up and ready to go. Let's go ahead, and I turned off menu music for this video so that we wouldn't have the launch box menu competing with us here. We're going to fire up Conquest of Camelot. Uh, now, any game that is supported by ScumVM that's in ExoDOS will give you the option to launch with ScumVM or DOSBox at the time you launch it. Uh, in this case, we'll go DOSBox. The ScumVM does not emulate the IBM feature music card. And you'll see we have quite a few music options on this game. There's the Tandy, the IBM music feature card, the Game Blaster, the Sound Blaster, and the MT32. Now, I'm planning on doing videos for every sound card type that we support currently. Uh, to talk about the differences between them, to talk about how they sounded. But the cheat sheet is to, from top down, is oldest to newest, generally. Uh, now you'll find that the Gravis Ultrasound, which is not listed on for this game, did come out after the MT32. But generally the MT32 is considered superior. So from top to bottom, it's generally a capability. Um, so the Tandy is a, is a three, uh, three voice sound chip. And then you get the IBM music feature card, which we're about to listen to. The Game Blaster has got this really kind of cool crunchy sound to it. And then finally the Sound Blaster, which most people uh, will be familiar with. And if you buy a game on good old games or, or that's an older game or on Steam, you're going to get the Sound Blaster version. Now we'll start out here with the Sound Blaster so that you have a baseline. And here comes the game. The Sound Blaster sound is ubiquitous. It's the most... If you had to think of a sound that represents DOS games, you're probably thinking of this. So let's see how that compares to the IBM Music Feature Card. Probably should have picked a game that didn't take quite so long to get to the part where the music starts, but what can I say? I really love the music for Conquest of Camelot. Now I can't tell you which one is objectively better. That's going to be up to you. What I can do is point out that if we go back over to Wikipedia here and we go to the sound card page, you'll see that the Adlib, which in this case is what the Sound Blaster is playing, was in 1987 as well. The IBM Music Feature Card is not even listed on this page because it was not well known enough to be listed on this page. So these two sounds came out around the same time. They're pretty different. Uh, the IBM one does have, in my opinion, more depth to it. 
It's got a little more bass, but it's also a little tinnier at some points. Uh, the point, however, here is not to objectively say it's better as much as to say you have the option to play it that way now. Uh, since we're doing Conquest of Camelot and we're talking about sound cards, even though we'll do another card later, let's compare a few different sound card types. Here's the Game Blaster. Uh, This one has a lot more of the synthetic, uh, synthesized tone. Long notes have a grit to them. And then we're going to jump. Let's go even further back though. Let's do the Tandy this time. I have a soft spot for the Tandy. This was only three, it was a three tonal chip. Considering this is where we came from directly after PC Speaker, it's pretty impressive. And finally, here the same thing is with the Roland MT32. Now the 30, MT32 had a programmable sound bank, so you could program your own instruments if you wanted to. Or use the instruments already built into it. It's kind of quiet. Almost a whole different soundtrack. Now, it is worth mentioning that after Sierra got on board with the IBM Future Card and made these games, they went full out in support for the MT32. Um, and that became the sound card of choice. If you look through for them, if you look through the Sierra catalogs, they are constantly pushing the MT32 uh, once they got their hands on it. And a lot of these games, if we go over to the MT32, uh, you'll see there's a lot more of them, 884 instead of 16. But for the Sierra games specifically, and I, I know other ones did it too, I just can't speak towards them. But King's Quest 1, 4, I believe most of 5, if not all of it, were composed on the MT32. Uh, 6 was not. 6 was actually made using more general MIDI uh, software. But, the, so that was, if you play those games with the MT32, you're hearing them the way that they had meant them to be. That's not this video. <laughs> this video is the IBM feature card, and staging just added support for this. Uh, it literally showed up on my bug reports this week, thanks to Python. He took the time to go through, figure out how to set it up in the comp file, the configuration file, get them to work. He edited all the run.bat files to create the options changed the configuration files to make sure that they had everything needed and uh, identified it all for me, uh, which is really appreciated and uh, a huge benefit and a boon to all of us that are using the pack. I hope that you enjoy exploring uh, the IBM feature card. Next time, we will talk about one of the other sound cards. Thank you.